Welcome back to You, Me, and the RV. Today is all about the toad or dinghy, whichever you prefer to call it. When it comes to towing a car, everybody's options are different because everybody's situation is different. Right. So we're going to discuss this and just give you pros and cons of everything and you'll figure out what's going to fit best for your specific situation. So the first thing you have to decide is whether or not you want to tow a vehicle. Not everybody wants to bring a tow car. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of towing a car. So one of the pros is you can jump in your car and leave whenever you feel like leaving. So having that car just gives you more options of when you can, uh, when you want to come and go. So another pro to having your own tow car is you don't have to drive your RV through town, especially new places you've never been before. So driving a big bulky RV or even sometimes a Class C can be pretty long in some of these small towns. So you don't have to worry about that navigation if you have a tow car. Another thing is you don't have to rely on cabs or using um, an Uber or a Lyft to get you uh, around wherever you're at. Or even renting a car. Some people go to a location and then rent a car while they're there. So if you have your own car, then you don't have to worry about doing that as well. Right. Uh, and another good pro is uh, if you break down while you're on the road, you have a vehicle that you can use to either go get help, go get a part that you need to get you back on the road sooner. And that would be great in an emergency situation. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about some of the cons of towing a tow car. Of course, the first thing is your RV is going to increase its gas mileage due to the weight of the tow car. Uh, and then, if you've never towed behind your RV, you might want to have to you, you might want to practice um, before you hit the road, just to make sure you get the feel of having a, a tow behind you. Yeah, because it can be a little different navigating with the the car behind you. Absolutely. Also, of course, startup costs for towing a car. You will, may need to purchase a dolly, a trailer, or even a tow package for flat towing, um, and that is a consideration. That's a huge consideration. Um, and then one of the last cons that we talk about is knowing your RV's uh, pull limit. Uh, whatever your hitch is rated for, you have to know that before you go out and just buy something, not knowing what your, allow, your allowable tow, towing weight is. Yep. All right, so now if you've decided to tow a car, let's talk about what you're gonna need to know next. There are several ways that you can actually tow your car once you decide you do wanna tow. So you can use a trailer, a dolly, or you can flat tow your car, and each have their own pros and cons. So we're gonna break those down for you now. Let's start with the trailer. All right, let's talk about some pros for trailers. First, of course, is it's great for carrying all your toys. So all the boys out there who carry their toys around with them when they go RVing, such as golf carts, kayaks, motorcycles, they work great on trailers. Wish I had some of those toys. We don't need those toys. <laughs> Another great pro is you can get a trailer that's covered um, and lockable. So you can put more than just a vehicle and your toys in there. You can use it as extra storage. Yeah. And then, of course, almost all cars will fit on a trailer. Of course, size depending. But almost all cars will work for, um, for this towing device. All right. Some of the cons are it can be a little heavy and cumbersome. This is the heaviest um, way to have a tow car. So, of course, it's going to use the most amount of gas when you're towing. Another thing, too, to consider uh, when you get to your campsite is detaching it from your RV and having to move it and store it. It's a little harder to do. Yeah, because it is so heavy. Right. And, of course, it'll take up the most space at your campsite of all the other options. Uh, and if you're not used to backing up with a trailer or anything on the back of your RV, that could be very cumbersome pulling into a tight spot. And you may not even be able to back up at all with this attached to the back of your RV. So that's something else to consider, having to detach the trailer before you pull into a site. So right. just something to think about. And because they are so heavy, if you have back problems, this may not be an option for you. Uh, and, and one of the last cons we would say is um, using your ramps in any kind of wet conditions. Uh, there's a propensity to uh, have the tires slide and you mm -hmm. can either slide mm -hmm. off the ramp or damage both the ramp and your vehicle. Yeah, so that can be a little dangerous. So those are some pros and cons for trailers. So next, let's move to the dolly. All right, so a pro for the for using the dolly is that it's cheaper and lighter than the trailer. And of course, because it's lighter, it's easier to move around. And with it being lighter and smaller, it takes up less space in the trailer. Yeah, on the camp when you're uh, camping, of course, sometimes your site can be really small. So even an extra foot or two uh, will make a big difference when you're pulling into some of those smaller campsites. The, the next pro can be applied to both the dolly and the trailer is that your vehicle will not accrue mileage while going down the road. Yeah, and such, um, you're not also not doing any wear and tear on the engine. Um, of course, we left that off the trailer part too, so that, you know, that counts for that as well. Right, and when you use the dolly, there's really no modifications that you have to, to do to your vehicle. You just kind of put it on the ramp and secure it to the dolly, make sure all the connections are good, and, 
and off you go. And most dollies will have a braking system. Um, and that being said, some of the trailers will too. So I didn't add that on the trailer side, um, but some of the trailers have braking systems also. Now do your homework on your the braking systems because some states require them, others don't. So you'll have to do your research. Yeah, on and that. some braking systems are better than others. So right. make sure you uh, look into that, as you said. Right. All right, so some cons with using the dolly is that your vehicle must be a front-wheel drive. It can't be an all-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah, so if you have a rear wheel or an all-wheel, it won't be an option for yeah. you. Also, hitch time. It does take a little time to get on the dolly and hitch it up. It can be anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes or, like our first time, even longer than that. <laughs> Trial by error. <laughs> um, another, another issue with the dolly is your ramp. So, um, your driving ramps, if they're wet, Again, it could be slippery, you could slide off, you damage yeah. both the vehicle and the dolly. And that actually happened to us once. It had been raining, we were in sand, and um, it was actually pretty scary for me. Um, next, of course, back problems. If you have back issues, this might not be a good option for you because you have to lift it and drag it around the campsite. And even sometimes strapping it down, um, you're bent over for a prolonged period, so that could have an impact. And one of the last cons of using a tow dolly is that your vehicle can is more susceptible to road damage from flying rocks, the road gators coming up, uh, because the front of your vehicle is a little, a little more open to the road. As opposed to being on a trailer, yeah. so for sure. All right, so that takes care of the dolly. Let's move to flat tow. And sometimes when people flat tow, they actually call their car a dinghy instead of a tow. So let's move on to that. All right, some pros about flat towing. This would be the easiest and fastest way to hook up. Yeah, for sure. I can do it all by myself. So it's something if you're alone or if you're nervous about doing the others driving the car up, this is something that's easy and I actually wouldn't be scared to do. <laughs> it's one win there. <laughs> um, something else is you don't have to worry about the extra weight of having a dolly or a trailer pulling behind you. Yeah, and that again affects your gas mileage and also you have to be aware of what your towing weight capacity is. Right. So um, that eliminates the weight of those. The beauty of uh, flat towing is there's it doesn't take up any extra space when you get to your campsite. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about negotiating a little bit extra length on your campsite in order to take care of this. And of course one of the biggest benefits for us is no back strain. So way less work on the back to hook up to the flat tow. Although we love the idea of flat towing, there are some cons involved. One of them being the startup costs. It can it can be upwards of three thousand yeah. uh, dollars. You need a special uh, base plate for your vehicle, the hitch itself, and maybe some wiring mm -hmm. and uh, a braking system. And of course, that also takes time. So you would have to take your RV and your vehicle, drop them off, right. um, schedule appointments. All that stuff needs to be negotiated. So that's just something to think about. Yeah. Another another con is. You can't back up with this. If you do, mm -hmm. you will severely damage your tow bars. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And for this method of towing, you must have a specific type of transmission that yeah. allows to be towed with all four wheels down. And frankly, there's not a lot of them out there. No. And that's why you see a lot of Jeeps being flat towed because everyone knows Jeeps um, transmission can handle it. So if you have a car and you're thinking you want a flat tow, if you um, do a search for um, dinghy towing guide mm -hmm. by um, Motorhome Magazine, right. they have a complete list of cars that you can tow dating all the way back to cars made in 2000. And they're very specific. They break it down by model, uh, mm -hmm. what type of transmission can be. They even give you the weight of the vehicle. So they, yeah. they kind of take yeah. a lot of the guesswork out of the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a, great, it's a PDF you can download to your computer. Right. Um, and the last con I would say is some of the vehicles will accrue mileage uh, just based mm -hmm. on how they're they're configured. Yeah, oh, and one more. Um, depending on your car, after you've towed it for over 10,000 miles, you may get an abnormal right. wear pattern on your tires. Right. So it's just something to think about. You may just need to rotate the tires more frequently. Right. Good, good All call. right, so that wraps up flat tow. So let's talk about our specific situation and what we're doing and what we like and what we don't like about it. So currently we have a tow dolly that we're using and um, it was less expensive than right. flat tow. We actually had two cars that we paid off um, thanks to Dave Ramsey, which is my Fiat 500, which I love. <laughs> and of course, Phil's Acura. Which I love. So the big question is, which car are we keeping and which car are we unloading? So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each one. So let's talk about the pros for keeping my wonderful Fiat instead of Phil's Acura. So my car is much lighter than, than the other car. It's only 2,400 pounds, which means we would use less fuel to pull it behind the RV. Also, my car uses way less gas to drive. So it's about 25 in the city and 35 on the highway, 
where Phil's is about 22 and 30. Also, um, the Fiat will take up way less room at campsites, so that wouldn't be a, a consideration that we would need to think about like we will with the Acura because it's so long. There is one con, however, to keep in the Fiat, and that is the narrow wheelbase. The wheelbase is so narrow, it's really hard to pull up on the dolly. We have to line it up just so to make sure that we don't actually fall off in the center of the dolly. But I still think the Fiat should win. Feeling so small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out, so Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me Here are the pros and cons to why we should keep my 2015 Acura TLX. Because after all, it is a luxury car. The pros, I really don't have any. No, just kidding. I'm leaving that. Keep going. <laughs> the pros are it has a wider wheelbase, so it fits better on the dolly. The cons are it's a bit heavier and it uses more gas, both the car and which it, when it relates to the RV itself for towing. So there's really no, no debate. The Acura should win. It's nicer, it's sportier, gets in and out of traffic a lot faster than the Fiat. The Acura, 2015, I think we should keep it. Look at the beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. Lay my troubles to rest, blow the smoke through my cigarette. City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold me down Feel alive So although the tow dolly is working for us now, it was it was perfect for starting up because it was cheap, quick, and easy, right. and we didn't have um, any more startup costs than we already had. It is not the most ideal for our personal situation. Um, a, because I still freak out a little bit every time I drive the car up on the um, tow dolly, and B, feels back. Um, it's not the greatest. Yeah, it's not the greatest, um, and it really isn't isn't the, a good thing for us because of that. So the goal is for us to go out and see the world and be adventurous, but you know, frankly, Phil Strone is back out picking up a pair of socks. So the last thing I want is Don't for him- Don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. His <laughs> shoulders say I'm strong. Yeah, yeah. It's for him to throw his back out just connecting us to the dolly. So for us in the future, flat toe is going to be the way we're going to go. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're, we're doing our research now. I think the flat toe is, is definitely our, our best option. Um, we, I'm, I'm tired of having to unhitch the dolly and move it around the campsite and it's just like she said it's too hard my back is yeah. is can't handle it so we're, we're doing our research now for a flat toe setup and once we get uh, moving on that we will keep you involved every step of the way of the, right. that but for now we still have the dolly and I bet you're dying to see which car won <laughs> wouldn't we like to tell ya we all know I should be the winner because I have the most pros she does. I have all the pros for my car, and it's so cute. How could you not love it? I know, and the old the old saying goes, happy wife, happy life. This is true. People listen to that. 
and, and the, the winner, winner is, is the luxury car. All right, so remember what we said earlier, a happy wife, happy life? Yeah, well. She's happy. Look at the smile on her face. <laughs> she knows this is a car we should be dragging around the country with us. Actually, the truth is, since we're planning to eventually flat tow, um, it didn't really matter which one we keep because we're getting rid of both of them. <laughs> True. So, so Mine, I really, I don't really care. Mine just got an extended stay. <laughs> yeah, a stay of execution. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it for tow cars. I hope we provided some good information for you as you make your decision on whether to tow or not to tow or how to tow if you decide you do want to bring a car along. So the research continues on the flat tow setup along yeah. with the flat tow vehicle. So we're, we're still doing that. Please offer any advice you can on, on both the setup and yeah. vehicle type. Absolutely. And we will keep you posted and um, do a video on that once we decide on the car and the setup for um, the flat tow. But until then, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a, um, a thumbs up. And share us if you know somebody who's about to go full time. Sorry about the thunder. I can't really control that one. We really <laughs> hope it starts raining now. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see, see you on, on the, the road. road. <laughs> so easy, is it, director? Oh, I'm just going to leave it. All right. Some of the trailer pros are they're great for. Uh, we have a Ford. A Ford Fiat. What is wrong with me? I don't know. It's your car. <laughs> All right, drag one along with you. All right, start over. Right in the middle of nowhere, there's a car along there. Okay. All right. Stop. Weather. Stop. We gotta do that again. Why? Because I made a face because I didn't like the way that sounded. I went. And All then right. you started talking. And make talking. sure you're smiling. I know, I was, but okay. then I made a face and I don't know. I tried not to. But I think you paused too long, babe. No, d -d 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 yeah. Okay, go. I went. Oh my god. Get your hands out of your pockets. Move oh. your hands and not your head. Okay. <laughs> there are several. Don't make faces. I'm not. Okay. Yep, so a car, the car in the. So having that. Right. And each have its, has its. Uh, so all those guys out there who have to carry all their toes. All their toes. <laughs> They're attached. Yeah, you have no choice but to carry them. Alright, try that again. All ten of them. <laughs> so there are several. Uh, okay. So one of the cons for using the dolly is your vehicle um, has the. I wanna drive a faster car